Hi, everyone. Great to be here again at uh, four years from now. Um, my name is Zach Weisfeld, and I run Microsoft Accelerators globally. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. But the thing I wanted to talk about today is the challenge that startups are facing today. So it's the easiest time in history to start a startup. The easiest. It's the hardest time in history to be successful as a startup. And what I'm going to mention later today is how do we help solve that issue, solve that problem of making it easier for startups to be successful um, in these days. But to do that, I need to go uh, four years ago, not four years from now, uh, to the challenge I've taken on at Microsoft about four years ago. So I was asked to join and help Microsoft connect the company to some of the new emerging startups coming out there. We saw an amazing trend. We saw startups starting quickly and becoming very quickly pretty big, pretty successful. And as many, many corporates out there, we had to figure out how do we connect to these startups. At the time, we didn't have name for these startups. Today, we call them unicorns. And we looked at these unique animals, you know, fascinating animals, and we had to figure out how do we connect with them? How do we add value? How do we make something that works for them and for us and, and build something together? So in order to solve that, uh, that question, I went out and did a global journey. I went out to different places around the world where unicorns are existing or, or forming. And I looked at different engagement models that people do with these unique animals. And in the journey, I went to one place, um, throughout the journey, to one place that uh, uh, I got to, which was uh, Microsoft, Microsoft R&D Center in New England. It's called the New England R&D Center. Or short, it's called the Microsoft Nerd. Believe it or not, that's, that's the name of that place. And as you know, if you have a tough question, there's always a nerd you can go to to ask an answer for that question. I'm sure there are many nerds here in this, in this audience. So the interesting thing that I saw that the team at Nerd did, they had some, some space available in their building. And they subleased that space to two great accelerators, to Techstars and to Dogpatch. And I looked closely at the kind of engagement they did, and I thought, that's a, actually a pretty great engagement model for us. So I came back, a chain person. I learned a new thing, which were the accelerators. And I thought that would be a great thing for Microsoft to do, is to connect through accelerators with startups. And I start, started trying to sell that idea internally. And the first thing I did, I went up to Redmond, our headquarters, and tried to talk to a few people around it. Guess what? Most said, no. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense for Microsoft. Would it make sense for the startups to engage with us? So didn't get much love there. But as a good entrepreneur, and I've been an entrepreneur for, for a bit over 20 years, um, I said, okay, so that's their opinions. I think differently. Let's keep on going. And I said, let's go to people that are professionals in doing accelerators. Let's go to some of the people that run accelerators for a business. And I pick up the phone and I called uh, um, David Cohen. David Cohen is the founder uh, and CEO of Techstars. And I called up David and I said, you know, David, Maybe it's the right time and the right uh, time for you to build up an accelerator in Tel Aviv together with us, with Microsoft. And David said, you know what, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's the right time, not the right model. I'm not sure that we have the right engagement there. Another opinion that I've taken and, and tried to learn from that. And I said, okay, David doesn't want to do it. Let's figure out some local partners that may want to partner on this. And one of these partners, a good friend of mine, uh, Yaniv Golan, I don't know how many of you know him. Yaniv is a, um, a general partner at the micro VC in Israel called uh, Lul Ventures. He's also a serial entrepreneur uh, and uh, former co-CEO of AOL in Israel. And I said, Yaniv, I, I have an idea of an accelerator. I want to do a Microsoft accelerator. Yaniv looked at me and said, Zach, you're nuts. Not a single entrepreneur in his right mind would want to come to a Microsoft Accelerator. It doesn't make sense. Why would, why would they do that? Again, another interesting uh, opinion that I got. But then I went to my boss at the time, Mr. Yom Yaakov. Yoram runs the Israel R&D Center for Microsoft. 
one of the most passionate, optimistic people I know. And Yoram said, Zach, you've had this mantra for a long time about accelerators. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know why you want to do this, but go ahead. Take some, some space, take some headcount, and go and, and build an accelerator and see if it works or not. And so we did. So um, after this, I briefed Satya Nadella. He was the head of our server and tools division, today's CEO of Microsoft. Uh, it was November 2011. And he thought it's an interesting idea, and we should give it a try. So this was November 2011. Five months later, we've opened our first accelerator out of Tel Aviv. So we had 200 companies applying for this first batch. We've picked 11 to start that patch, batch, sorry, and it went pretty well. Two months later, we've opened up Bangalore and uh, Beijing. So China and India came two months later. Today, we run seven accelerators. Bangalore, Beijing, Berlin, London, Paris, Tel Aviv, and Seattle. And we also have a joint venture in Sao Paulo. But so what? So we have some real estate, we have some, some activities, but does it work? Can this model really work? Can Microsoft and accelerators really work? So I'm really, really happy to tell you that we, sorry, <laughs> Really happy to tell you we practically built the, the number one corporate accelerator in the world. So we have 454 graduates. They raised $1.8 billion, and we're less than four years since the day we've started. We started in April 2012. 80% of them, more than 80% of them got funded. Average raise per startup is about $4.9 million. 29 of them exited through an acquisition and three already went through an IPO. Pretty impressive stats for the, for the startups that went through the program. But did we create enough impact on the ecosystem we've, we've worked in? So we just won a couple months ago, the third year in a row, the most remarkable accelerator in China. This is out of 1,800 programs. We won the number one accelerator in India for the second year in a row by Economic Times. And um, the same couple of weeks ago, we received uh, an award for the number one accelerator program in Tel Aviv or in Israel based on Geek Time. So the program works, works really, really well. But we said that's not enough. Can we do something better with startups? Can we do something better for Microsoft with startups? Well, we found out that accelerators have become table stakes. As you all know, there's a new accelerator starting every day. There are tons of accelerators, a flood of accelerators. Should we do something different that adds more value than, than the standard accelerators? There are great accelerators out there, by the way. Don't, don't misunderstand me, but I think there's a model that maybe can do a little bit better. The other thing we figured out, we looked at the data. We looked at the applications we're getting. We're getting about 10,000 applications a year to our accelerators. We only accept about 2% of those that apply. So we looked at the data of the, of the people that applied, and we started seeing startups a bit of a later stage applying for the program. So no longer the pre-seed startups, but more of a Series A startups. We said, how can we help these startups be successful? So as a startup inside Microsoft, we went out and we did some customer development. We talked to about 200, 250 people. We talked to our graduates. We talked to um, people that raised VC funding without going to an accelerator. We talked to the VCs. And we tried to figure out what would be the engagement model that will be the next level from accelerators. What would be the engagement model that will help startups be more successful in their most critical times, which are around their Series A funding? And we found a few interesting things through that, that process. The things that we found that they really need are go-to-market, both strategy and help with their go-to-market. How do they scale their go-to-market? We figured out that startups, in order to be successful and to scale, have to get access to customers. So it's no longer some local customers that are willing to be their early betas. It's real customers that are ready to scale with this startup. We found out that they need access to tier one investors. You know, friends, families, and fools are great, 
uh, it ends at a certain point, how do you get to your Series A investors? How do you get to your Series B investors? Not as easy. And they needed access to these investors. And the last thing that includes many of the things I've mentioned earlier, we started seeing that companies need a pretty good process to manage their maturity because they're growing from a startup to a company. The executives grows from a founder to a CEO. And how do you do that? How do you do that in a very organized fashion? How do you help company go through their maturity level? So these are the things that we figured out people need from us at that stage. And the other thing we realized is if in an accelerator working with pre-seed seed startups, we mostly work on their MVP, on their minimal viable product. We understood that in the next stage, we have to help them work on their minimum of viable company. So from an MVP to an MVC, how do you build a company? How do you build a successful company? So turning the corner from working on their product to working on their company. So if we look at the world as we know it, there are lots of companies that are starting this way. You have a founder, a couple of founders with an idea, they may go to it alone, or they'll join an incubator, and they'll get their idea a little bit more solid. Then, they may join an accelerator. Like many here, if you, if you walk outside to the hall here, lots of accelerators. There are many accelerators, new accelerators every day. And we see more and more startups getting to accelerators. The challenge there is that there are more and more accelerators as we speak. So it's getting harder and harder because there are many more companies coming out of these accelerators. And what happens at the end of these accelerators, the hard work starts. And most of the company lose grip when they finish these accelerators and they need to get scaled, they need to get customers, they need to get funding and most fail. And it even gets worse because what we used to call the Series A crunch getting even worse. Why? Because again, there are many, many more companies there's not that much more money to be invested at this stage, and it's, it's harder, it's hard to be successful. So how do we solve this? How do we help solve this? How, from a corporate perspective, we play in this ecosystem, in this game to solve this? Here comes the Scalarator. So the Scalarator is um, it's a process of taking these companies that are ready to scale. They're Either they went through an accelerator or they're in this right phase of before their Series A or they're at their Series A, and we can help them scale through all the things I mentioned earlier, go to market, access to customers, access to investors, working with the CEO on getting things done right, building a scalable, scalable company. I'll give you a few examples of the work that's being done. So this is Malta. He's a CEO of a company called Kringle out of our Berlin accelerator. And what Malta says, he says, look, no one is born a CEO. You learn, you come and learn to be a CEO. It's a skill you learn. And I can tell you that in almost every cohort we've been running, we had a situation of a startup that um, we helped the founder understand he's not the right CEO for his company. And there might be a better CEO to get them through what they need next and help, together with the mentors, find, find them a CEO and, and bring that person on board. We had one company in, in one of our last cohorts that a CEO dis, uh, resigned in the middle of their uh, fundraising. How do you go through that when you're such a young company? It's not an easy thing. And having someone that can help you go through that process, super important. Another example, Chase from a company called Skip. Great company that deals with uh, uh, mobile, Basically, how to go through retail store experience without going to the cashier. How do you go only through your mobile device and, and get things done? Um, what, what Chase needed as the CEO of Skip, he needed connections to the largest retailers in the world. So we've made sure that the business development director of Microsoft that deals with retail is taking Skip when he's ready to meet with the largest retailers in the world. Uh, we made sure that Skip has stage uh, presence at the largest retail conference in the world. These are the kind of things you need to do with the companies that are getting to their later stage and are ready to engage with the largest players out there. 
The other thing is we built a global program. And as I said, we're in eight locations, uh, seven that we run ourselves and one joint venture in Sao Paulo. And we have also partners that come from all these locations. So one of the things we figured out, there are partners and companies that want to engage with startups all over the world. And they're ready to engage with these startups. So one example is we've, we've taken one of the banks from Australia and we brought them to the capital of fintech, which is London. And we brought in startups from all over the world that are ready to engage with that level of bank um, and, and work together. And that was another way for us to go and engage at that stage that the companies are ready to engage, which is a bit of a later stage. So that's just to summarize, it's the easiest time in history to start a startup. It is the hardest time in history to be successful. It's running a startup, raising funding, being successful out there. There's a role that corporates can play in this game. There's a role that we can add value, not distract value, but add value to startups. Most of the corporates you're going to see out there really want to engage. They want to make sure they have their finger on the pulse, they know what's happening, and they're open to engage now more than ever with startups. You should take advantage of that. And we believe that with the scalary model, we have the right model to engage between corporates and startups. So four, year, four years from now, what I think is going to happen is in this, uh, um, in this space outside where you have so many accelerators, you're also going to have some scalerators and some people working with later stage startups. So thank you very much for having me here, and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.